welcome to a special Made by Google edition of Android Faithful. We're your weekly source for Android news, hardware, apps, discussion, and this week we're all about the Pixel line and Made by Google. I am Ron Richards. I'm Jason Howell on a different camera. <laughs> and I'm Michelle Rahman. Hello, gentlemen. So uh, we are gather. We are. It is made by Google Eve. We are gathering before the event. Uh, much thanks to our, our friends at Google who pro- who provided under embargo, of course, uh, all the information and the specs about what is being unveiled today uh, in Mountain View at the Made by Google event. Um, but there are so many specs and so many things to talk about. And since we're going to be at Mountain View in Mountain View at the event, we wanted to gather here and kind of go through all the stuff, give you everything you need to know, um, and then later on the show we'll follow up with our post event uh, impressions and feedback and thoughts after we finally get our hands on these devices because there's a lot to go through, right? Right, Michelle? We've just been going through everything. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Ron. If you want the nitty-gritty details, like every single, uh, you know, spec, every single, you know, availability thing, you know, everything yep. you want to know about the devices, you can go to AndroidFaithful.com where we'll have articles covering yep. the devices in details. Yep. We'll talk about the high-level changes and the things that we think are most significant in this session but uh, you know, there's just way too much to talk yeah. about. We, we didn't want to sit. Cover yeah, it. we didn't. We don't want to sit. Have you sit here for two hours listening to yeah, us talk? Yeah, we don't. We want to go through battery sizes and things like that. Like we're just gonna hit like the key things that we think are most important about it. And like Michelle said, um, everything's gonna be on AndroidFaithful.com. So make sure you go check that out. Um, so with that, let's get right into it. Um, at and made made by Google in Mountain View, they rolled out a portfolio of products related to the uh, in the pixel uh, in the pixel line um you know pretty much focused on phones watch and earbuds those are the main hardware and in They're the so phone pretty. i know so so pretty um in the phone size we got in the phone area we've got one two three four phones to talk about here <laughs> yeah yeah so um, i think the fact that there are no four yeah. devices in the new pixel phone lineup is is really significant because yeah. since the beginning since the original pixel we only had two phones in yeah. you know each flagship lineup we had pixel pixel xl then we've had you know pro and non pro now we have non pro 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 xl pro <laughs> fold yes so we have four devices what do you all and- think about that well, not only four devices, but they're also doing this on the wearables now too, right? Now right. we've got the two different sizes. I mean, I think it's well, there's I think two it's, different sizes. Yeah. yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, but that's ostensibly what the Pro, Pro XL and Pro right. is. There's yes, two, that's, just that's, two different that's sizes. Kind of my right? point is, yeah. they're very similar phones. It's just one's larger than the other for the most part. But right. I mean, I mean, overall, I think it's something that has come up for me in these devices in the past, which is, you know, not everything is one size fits all. I think it's taken Google a while to kind of get there to the the wide differentiation. I think it's worked for Samsung for the most part. Samsung yeah. differentiates to a wider degree than even Google does in some cases. And, you know, I don't think it hurts as has hurt Samsung to do that. So I think it's good for Google to, to do that. Well, I think one of the significant one of the main reasons that they are doing this, at least like according to what they told us, is because, you know, in the past, you always had to choose. Did you want a small right. phone or right. do you want a, a massive phone. phone with all the pro right. features? Mm-hmm. Right. But now you don't really have to choose. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can have your compact well, phone. You're making a choice. Feature. Well, you're making a choice in some degree there. But yes, you there are, are making. There are yeah. there are still some trade offs. You know, yeah. in terms of battery capacity. Yeah. But the trade offs are not nearly as dramatic. As yeah, used to be. and and I think the the most the most notable thing for me and the big disappointment here was the confirmation that there is no a equivalent mid range or low end phone here. Um, the Pixel. Well, 9, they just announced the A eight A a couple of months ago. I mean, right. There yeah. Could yeah, be a nine A sometime down the road. Yeah. yeah but remember, we ru- so. we rumored that they were getting rid of the A and it was going to be everything at once and it was going to be the 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 nine A, the nine the nine Pro. That did not happen. So like rumored to bunk or whatever there. But so that said, let's get into the Pixel Nine first. Um. So the Pixel Nine. Uh. I think the 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 biggest thing that that we want to get across to everybody is that the price of the Pixel Nine starts at seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Um. And it's available in four colors. Obsidian, porcelain, wintergreen, and peony. Which uh, peony is, is the, a is that uh, pink? Is, is yeah, a synonym for pink. Right. <laughs> so there's that there's that pink color. Our first notice of the Pixel Pank Nine. Peony. Um, yeah. So anything stand out to you guys about the Pixel Nine uh, as the base model uh, of the phones? Um, I guess for me, actually, the the most significant difference now is that they've bumped. 
the memory from 8 gigs in the, in the Pixel 8 to 12 gigs. And that's obviously yeah. because they want to integrate Gemini into yeah. all their devices in the Pixel 9 series. And that's something we'll probably talk about a bit later, focusing on the hardware first. But I, think, I do think that is the most significant difference in hardware compared yeah. to the Pixel 8. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that also they're, they're really touting and pushing the battery life on all these phones. Yeah. You know, they're saying that, you know, with, with bigger and faster charging, um, you'll be able to charge the Pixel 9 to 55% in about 30 minutes. Um, so assuming you're at zero. So you can get 50, over half the battery life charged up in 30 minutes. Um, I don't know what it takes to get the remaining 45% there, but that's pretty fast. So good for them. I mean, it's fast if you ignore all the Chinese phones out there. You know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's, we're being exactly. honest. You know what? Yeah. It's United yeah. States fast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's seven ninety nine, dollars um, And then that gets us into the Pixel 9 Pixel Pro. Pixel 9 Pro. Yeah. Which Pixel is 9 $200 Pro more at nine ninety nine. Yeah. So yeah, what do so you get for paying $200 more? Why don't you tell us, Jason? So wait, wait. <laughs> Pixel Nine Pro is nine ninety nine. Pixel Nine yep. Pro XL is starts at ten ninety nine, um, and those are available in obsidian, porcelain, hazel, and rose quartz. So um, just to get okay. the colors across. <laughs> well, what do you get besides different colors by paying two hundred to three hundred dollars more? What What is the benefit? Well, what is the benefit of upgrading to a Pro um, from the, the regular nine? So you're getting more RAM, right? Sixteen gig of RAM. Sixteen gigs um, of RAM. Um, you're getting, what else are you getting? Um, uh, there's also, uh, five X telephoto camera, yep. 48 megapixel five X telephoto camera, which is not present on the base model. Yep. Um, you also have a much better front camera. I believe Google said it's a 42 megapixel front facing camera yep. with 30% better light sensitivity. Um, and it, on the base pixel so nine, pretty. it's an actual display, but on the pros, it's a super actual display. Super actual. Super, super actual display. <laughs> what does the super <laughs> signify then? Um, Just more actual. <laughs> <laughs> Higher, uh, yeah. Is, is that yeah, sharpness? I mean, is that brightness? I mean, there's, the display itself is 15% thinner. And right. it's that's also an, and that also is enabling the bezels to be uniform across all the phones yeah and like, it looks and the, really and the, nice and that's the one really. that's the one thing about it is if you look at the photos on androidfaithful.com or if you're watching the video and you're seeing the the photos of, of these different devices in the different colors um that they, they they all look the same right like on a photo standpoint they all look very very uniform and just the only difference is the sizes and i'm really you know when when we get hands-on with them it'll see what the what the phone feel is and what the size difference is but like just looking at a photo of it standalone, it's hard to tell which one is the nine versus the nine pro versus the nine pro XL aside from the size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And just to clarify the difference between the actua and the super actual display is the super actua has a higher peak brightness and also higher resolution. Brightness. Okay. So yeah. similar so is, difference both... between the eight and the eight pro from the Got previous it. generation where the, the base eight had a 1080p resolution and the eight pro had a quad HD resolution and also higher brightness. Right. So that's the difference in the display. Right. Um, so, but also should... between the, the 9 Pro and the 9 Pro XL, obviously there's a bit of difference in the screen size between the two. One right. 6.3 to 6.8 inches. Yeah. Also $100 more if you're going XL. So now we're yeah. now we're post True. post $1000 uh price point for the for the phones themselves not foldable, right? Is this the right. first time that we've seen an eleven hundred dollar price for from Google? I think it is. Right? From, from Google, ever, yeah, yeah. I don't think we've ever for the broken base the, model. Yeah, I think for the it base might be. model. Yeah, that's a big deal. We've ne never broken the thousand before. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's important to note that all these are running the Tensor G four chip. Um, uh, so like you know their next next you know generation of Tensor, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, right. Uh, and, and by and the way, fair, whole... they did also raise the price up to high by hundred dollars. I think the pixel eight started at six ninety nine. Was it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they have ra like raised the price pretty much across the board for a lot of these phones. So it's not yeah. just um, yeah, the pixel the pixel eight pro yeah. topped out at nine ninety nine. So, right. Okay. Yeah. So there it is. Interesting. Well, and, and when, we, when, not alone when we were asked Google this, about yeah. this during the briefing, they just, they just cited that, you know, they upgraded the hardware across the board. 
and that was the justification for inflation. the increase in price. I yeah, mean, every, Samsung did the inflation. same thing recently, Everyone's right? Yeah. With, yeah. Everything's with more expensive. Everybody. Everything was one hundred dollars more expensive, and they also cited inflation, yeah. you know, as as at least one one reason why. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So one the, thing I do after you, Michelle. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, one thing I wanted to say is a lot of these hardware upgrades in the nine nine Pro and nine Pro XL are not significant compared to the eight and the eight Pro. But the other device that we haven't talked about in the series is a massive upgrade. Yeah, well, so before before we get to that, and I know that's that's the, that's the biggie, uh, literally. Um, going back to the battery, at least in the Pro and the Pro XL, um, this one charges up to seventy percent in thirty minutes. So, like the fast charging is that much faster in the on the on the Pro and the Pro XL. Um, and they've introduced a bit of new technology. They're, they a brand new vapor chamber inside the Pro and the Pro XL, vapor. which is which is uh, pretty exciting from there. Nice. So, uh, and there's a bunch of software stuff that that is working across all these phones. We're going to get to that after we get through the hardware. So, yeah. Michelle, what's what's the big what's the big reveal on the fold dun, side? Dun, dun, <laughs> the fold is a massive change from the yeah. first gen Pixel Fold. Yeah. So I don't have a first gen Pixel Fold to show you. If Win was on, she could have like popped up. Oh, here's my Pixel yeah, we, Fold. We've looked at it, um, before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can do that. Um, the first gen Pixel Fold was really wide when it opened up. It was basically like in landscape mode when it opened up. This phone is much closer to a square when you open it up. So it's significantly narrower um, on both the cover display and the inner display. It's also thinner. It's obviously not the thinnest foldable on the market, although in asterisk, Google will say it's the thinnest foldable in the U.S. market. (laughs) (laughs) U.S. Which is fair. That's fine. Which is fair. It is. It's it's true. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Right. But yeah, it's it's thinner. It's lighter. It has a narrower portfolio. I think overall... Um, the thing that makes it a massive upgrade is not just the design, but the fact that it's upgrading from a Tensor G2 to a Tensor G4. So two Huge, generational. It's, it's a jump. Yeah, big right, step yeah. up. You're not, not sacrificing that, for the foldable for, uh, form. Not value. only that, I think something Stepping. that's kind of overlooked is the fact that since the Pixel Fold launched with a Tensor G2, it was technically considered part of the Pixel 7 generation. Mm, so right. it missed out on a lot of features that the Pixel 8 generation got, such as Gemini Nano support, the seven years of updates, it didn't get any of that. It, it missed out on so many features. Yeah. But because the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is launching in the Pixel 9 generation, it has the same processor, it has all the same features, all the same benefits, and seven years of updates across the board, which yeah. applies to the Pixel 9, 9 Pro, 9 Pro XL, and the 9 Pro Fold. Yeah. So it is now a true proper flagship it's not the it, red it, it's that child good it caught up yeah, same, yeah. same memory 16 gigs right like they all yep. kind of Six top gig, out 16, 16 gigs yeah yeah so so, so, for, so for the important specs um it's available only in porcelain and obsidian so you can't get a pank or wintergreen fold um, but they do have Why? cases they've got uh porcelain obsidian cases and they've got a bright green case that you can put around it if you do want a little color for your fold um but start but the price on the pixel 9 pro is indeed 17.99 so that does put it well, well, well up on the upper range of these foldable yeah. phones in terms of prices. But, right? but worth noting, that's $200 that, cheaper than the Galaxy Z Fold yep. 6 that I got right here. Yep. And yep. is that the same price as the, the previous generation fold, Pixel Fold? I think it is, yeah. yeah th- Actually, that's, no, my, that's my cheaper, memory right. is that that's about the same price. So if that's the case, they didn't actually go up on their it's currently in the list of a Google premiums. Pixel Fold is currently for sale in the um, in the Google store for seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, so. so yeah. My fault. The Z Fold 6 is only $100 more than <laughs> right. the Pixel 9 yeah. Pro Fold. Not $200 more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Um, it's still, they're still ludicrously expensive devices. It's very, I mean, it's, really it, it, is, it is a luxury device for sure. Yeah. For um, sure. So that's the, talk about, that's yeah, the that's lineup. The, those are the, those are the overall right. hardware. Right. The phones. So, but, so the, so, let's talk about the software on the phones, right? Um, I do want to mention the Tensor G4 a little okay. bit though, because it powers yeah, all four devices. Yep. You know, like it's not a generational leap, like some were hoping, like there's no new CPU that Google is making. It's still using off the shelf, you know, arm designs, but Google did mention that, you know, overall um, it's significantly faster web browsing, app launching and more power efficient. I should hope so. Most (laughs) importantly, it supports Gemini Nano with multimodality, which is their latest generation of um, foundation model that they announced at Google IO that supports not only text based um, inputs, but also 
image inputs. Yep. And that powers a lot of the new features that will be available on these devices. And I think that's a good way to talk about, you know, their latest features, especially well, the yeah. Gemini features. I, I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the whole thing is that this is so much so much of the announcement today made by Google with everything from Google is here are these phones and these are how they're enhanced with Gemini, right? Um, uh, uh, Samir Samat's blog post um, is all about bringing Gemini to the phone and these phones are designed around Gemini. This is really the first iteration of Google phones fully on board with Gemini, not the phones being out in Gemini kind of catching up and doing that sort of thing. Right. Um, you know, like, like we talked, you know, hell, you know, Gemini only launched this year really in, in fully kind of fully formed earlier yeah. this year. Um, you know, we got some stuff late last year, but like, this is the, this is like, everybody's caught up, everybody's on board with the direction and this is how it is all implemented to the point where they have a new, and, and Jason, for our video viewers, I know there's a link to the video. There's a new, um, uh, like overlay Gemini, uh, you access Gemini on the phone on top of whatever you're doing. Um, and it allows you to directly interact with Gemini on top of those apps. Um, and you could talk directly to it, type to it, post a, you know, uh, you know, take a picture and Gemini will react on top of whatever you're working on at the moment, which is nice. huge, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more contextual than yeah. before. Yeah. Right. And that's an illustration of how it, it's not just an app that's running on the device that you have to remember to go to get to, you know, and Google's doing this back, with all their I properties, gotta, not yeah. just on Android. They're doing it inside of Sheets and Docs and everything. They're taking the, the approach of let's put Gemini everywhere where people already are when they're using our products and yeah. uh, and our services. And this is this is an, exactly an example yeah. of that. So, like so that. you've got major, major Gemini integration across the board and all the phones to be expected, right? Um, but then, uh, but then there's a whole bunch of new software on the software side and camera features. What do we want to go through first? Do we want to, well, I do want to mention there's one other Gemini feature that they had showed off at IO is now finally available, you know, with the launch of these devices, Gemini live. For those yep. of you remember, that's that super conversational Gemini mode where you can like point your camera at something, ask it questions immediately and continue a conversation. That experience is finally going live. Although you do have to have a Google One AI premium subscription, which I think it's like twenty dollars a month or a little more mm. than that. Yeah, I think that's um, about but, it. But yep. But if you buy a Pixel Nine Pro phone, so a Pro Pro XL or Pro Fold, they're giving you a full year of this subscription, so you can try out Gemini Live and you know also get two terabytes of Google One at the same yeah, time. Give you a taste. Right. I know. You know what? That give you a taste of the AI that you're going to pay for that that stuff works. I mean, it really does, it does because the more you end up using it, the more you find the the ways and the reasons why you use it. And then what they're hoping for is that it starts to become part of how you do things and it becomes next to impossible to think about pulling that back and going back to the way it was. I find myself in that similar position with perplexity. It would be really hard for me to to not have it at this point. Right. Yeah. They, they, I mean, so much of it is trying to get you hooked on board of it. And I will say For sure. that a lot, not only what Gemini can do, there's two, the way I look at it, there's two levels of Gemini, right? There's direct Gemini response. I need to know something. I'm doing something, generate something, do something for me. And then there's all the Gemini under the hood that is powering all this stuff, which is getting to the point where it's going to be hard to not live with to your point about perplexity, Jason, yeah, right? Like, yeah. like even, even on the, the camera feature side of things, just the fact that they are, you know, like every magic editor has been the, this huge, great thing on the on the Google Photos and the camera side that Google can offer. Um, they're adding a feature called Add Me, you know, which had been leaked, and we've heard some some stuff about it. But I literally earlier today was with my family and took a family picture, and we had to take a picture of the family and then take a second picture so the person taking the first picture could go get in the second picture. Add Me will do that for you. It will stitch everyone together and allow everyone to be in the photo at the same time, which is awesome. Like stuff like that, you know, uh, you know, they're adding Panorama Night Sight. They're adding, you know, um, there's this whole great auto framing feature where uh, Gemini and the camera system has learned the rule of thirds and can actually edit your photos and do the composition to be more photography uh, pro, you know, best in, you know, uh, best, uh, best in class photography approaches, um, in terms of your composition, 
you know, that all this stuff is crazy, you know, and they're going to boost video up to AK on the, on the pro models. So like, That's again, they keep pushing it. the ball forward on the camera side of things like insa- mm-hmm. insanity. Right. Although so. with the AK thing, it's worth noting, you're not recording natively in it. Right. It's literally still the right. 4k boost. native recording. Then yep. it's going to upscale to yep. 8k. But AI um, has proven to be a pretty darn, you know, good at that sort of thing. And, so, you know, leveraging, obviously, that's not happening on the device that's happening in the cloud. But uh, that's that's yeah. pretty, I mean, I think you're going to see a big difference. But there is a difference between upscaling versus yeah, getting yeah. it right at the Neither. source. Let's save the source, like the 8K camera, for a future Pixel announcement. Because you got to believe that at some point that's going to end up on their hardware. Yeah. But not this One year. other thing that I wanted to mention, I think is the reimagine feature. It, that's part of magic. Editor. Yeah. That one lets you basically select a background and then you can type a prompt to like, basically change it to whatever you want or like add something. For example, you can like select a background and add fireworks onto it or like butterflies that are yeah. flying through, you know, this or is it's a cloudy day like and I want it to be sunny. Theme. And <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of a more a free or freer version of the background swapping features that you kind of already see on a lot of phones. Now you can mm-hmm. just basically add whatever you want, just whatever your imagine allows for. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, on the software side of things, uh, we got confirmation on the new weather app. Thank God. Um, we got the confirmation. I love the new weather. I mean, we, weather Although, app, though, we do new weather, weather app, app with no frog. One thing that wasn't really leaked that wasn't shown off in the leaks though, yeah. is the fact that you get an AI generated summary of the weather at the top, which I think is yeah. probably the coolest feature. That is cool. Like, what's that's a weather app? Well, who cares about a new weather app? I know, obviously, right. a lot of listeners are like, "Oh, awesome, a new weather app." We love weather. We but love our AI weather apps. Summary, we love our, we love our weather apps. <laughs> I don't like. There's so much. There's an overwhelming amount of information. I just yeah. want to see. Like, is it going to rain? Should I bring yep. an umbrella? Should I bring a coat or something? Right? Give yeah, me that man. AI summary at the top, and I think yeah. that's the coolest feature of the new weather app. Yeah. Mm. Um, we've also got, uh, we've also got pixel screenshots just confer- confirmed. They are cleaning up the entire screenshot process. Um, you take a screenshot, it'll remember where it is. Um, you know, you can use Gemini to interact with your screenshots. Um, so That's if you're looking, yeah, if you're looking for, you know, like if you're looking for, you know, the, the code to the door in your apartment, you know, you can take a screenshot of it and then Gemini will search for it and pull up that code when you need it. Like license plate is for the, something. The, you yeah. took a snapshot cause you didn't want to forget. Uh, it and then you forgot yeah, it and now exactly. you can remember so, it through a simple search you know even though it's, it's worth image, noting it's really cool yep. this whole thing happens on device because of the new gemini yeah. nano with multimodality model like yep. that's what allows it to process these images on device right that so there's like so that so much on the software side um you know like you mentioned pixel studio the image generator Keep in mind, these are phones, and so they've got, you know, improvements on clear calling where they're saying that, you know, narrowband LTE calls are going to sound better than ever for those of you who actually make phone calls on your phone. Um, you know, <laughs> if you do make phone calls, it'll also call notes, which is yes. really neat. Oh, that's sweet. Yep. Yeah. Basically yeah. kind of summarizing the call that you make yep. and, yeah. you know, giving you the summary. I'm I as a f- pretty forgetful person uh, for details and stuff. I'm going to be using that one a lot. I know for yep. sure. Um, and the fold gets some specific software, which I think is really cool as a father of toddler. Now they're bigger than toddlers now. Damn it. But, um, uh, there's a, there's a feature on the fold around the camera called made you look, um, which yeah. you fold out the camera to take a picture and it gives a funny cartoonish kind of image to the, to on the outer, on the outer screen so that you're taking a picture of your kids, get them to laugh with that. So you get a nice smiling picture. I'm going to use the hell out of that. Uh, that give, is fa- Yeah. That is give them something to yeah. focus on and not, yep. you know, not yep. drift off and, and look yeah. away or whatever. And it's not just you know what picture, I hope? by the way it is animated. So yeah. you know what I hope you don't have to use the hell out of what? satellite SOS. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But it's nice to know it's there if you need to. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So apparently this is not launching with, the devices like Google says later this year, the pixel nine phones will be the first Android phones in the U S to support satellite SOS. Yep. And it'll be included at no charge for the first two years. Um, and eventually it'll roll out to other countries, but it's just starting in the U S you'll be able to, you know, contact emergency services via satellite connectivity. Nice. That's great. And I it's think been a long that time covers coming. pretty much everything we wanted to talk about on the pixel nine series. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was one more thing. I find it funny, actually, during the briefing. This was, like, mentioned in the summary slide. They didn't even talk about it at all in the briefing. It's the fact that all four phones, sorry, not all four phones, the the 9, 9 Pro, and 9 Pro XL, 
have ultrasonic under display fingerprint sensors now. Hmm. So mm-hmm. all the other phones in the past had the optical sensors. Now they're using ultrasonic sensors, presumably from Qualcomm. So yeah. if you use a Samsung phone before and you use your fingerprint sensor, that's the experience you'll be getting now on Pixel. Yeah, on doesn't Pixel use 9. that bright, bright light. So in a dark night, you know, in yeah. a dark room, if you use it, it's not going to blast your eyes out. Uh, more, more, more resistant or resilient rather to like to if your finger is wet, wet fingers, is, yeah. wet fingers, that's good. Yeah, yep. overall, or overall, a step up. Although I remember initially when optical fingerprint sensors were rolling out a handful of years ago, I still got better results out of. Um, oh, sorry, out, the ultrasonics were rolling out. I still got better results out of the optical, uh, but they've come a long way. I mean, Samsung's fingerprint sensors have been excellent, yep. so I'm happy right, about well, change. So there's so much more. Go look on AndroidFaithful.com to see all the details, and everything else. But they also rolled out uh, the watch and the buds. Um, right. So starting the with the watch, watch. Yeah, the watch with, is huge. This is a really big, big step forward. I think for yeah. the Pixel Watch. The watch is huge only if you choose the bigger model, Jason. Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> multiple different ways that it could be huge. Absolutely, so forty-one that, millimeter and forty-five. So you do have the two uh, two sizes now. Correct. Yeah. So you got that, right. and then um, you've also got important to note. I know a friend, you know, F- Florence Ion has many years railed on the sizes of watches and 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 being primarily. <laughs> male design forward the 41 millimeter watch in addition to the uh, obsidian and porcelain and and um the other the the, uh, the grayish color there is a uh pinkish color as well so if you want to go for that, color that, that uh that style uh you can do that if, if that is more your thing um but it is a smaller one and they've got that new display that allows them to use more oh, real yeah. estate on the display so they're getting like 15 percent more display on the on the watch themselves um the 45 millimeter version doesn't come in the in the fancy pink color, um, but it does come in the the black and gray and, and white colors. So, speaking of the display, they actually did make some pretty significant upgrades over the Pixel Two, Pixel Watch Two. Yeah. Um, Google says they're twice as bright with the peak brightness of two thousand nits, which is going to be really important because you're obviously going to be using your watch outside a lot. Two thousand, um, that's nice. It can yeah. get down to one nit of brightness. So if you're like at night, you want to see your watch, it's not going to blow your eyes out. And they also refresh from one to sixty hertz. So it's going to be smoother than the previous generation. Yep. Um, and just real quickly on pricing, just so everyone knows. So the 41 millimeter will be 349 with Wi-Fi or 449 with LTE. And the 45 millimeter is 399 for Wi-Fi, 4, uh, f- uh, 449 for LTE, same price, or it might be that might be incorrect. We'll look at we'll confirm that um, at the event itself. But um, still $450 for a watch. It's pretty pricey. Um, like Samsung, they're bringing a bunch of fitness stuff. There's Fitbit integration. You get six months of Fitbit premium. Um, there's a whole bunch, you know, a, a ton, uh, you know, in terms of functionality uh, around fitness that you get with the watch, which is no surprise, right? Because um, yeah, kind of one, one yeah. of the things they highlighted specifically was the focus on running. They have all mm. these d- new running features yeah. to help you plan, guide, and reflect on your workouts throughout time. You know, for example, like one of the things talked about, you know, you, if you have a goal of walking 6,000 steps a day or running a certain amount of time a day, they realize that every not every day you're going to have the same amount of energy to do that. So right. they kind of like integrated it with their new like the readiness score. They basically tells you, oh, here's how ready we think you are to achieve your goals throughout this day. And it kind of dynamically adjusts your goals based on, you know, how, how well you slept and your heart rate and all these other factors. Yep. Um, there's a wide array of bands that you can you can personalize yours if you if you want to um, you know if you don't like the colors that come with it they've got green and blue and all these different kind of materials and things like that um, but uh, you know you, you know you can you get the metal bands or the fabric or whatever you might might want to have there so that's, uh, nice that's nice they have a new yeah. more accurate heart rate sensor yep. and also improved battery life I think they said up to 36 hours in battery saver which is notably Still much less than this OnePlus Watch 2, which I will not upgrade yeah, from until someone else has it. It's hard now. We've been spoiled, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. We've been spoiled. I'm right there with you guys. I got my, but, my 2R, you know? Like, but okay. I love, I just love the Pixel Watch aesthetic. It's, so I'm yeah. super torn. I just, I love their design approach. The AI features or the, the, the like 
exercise and fitness analysis feature set that they've boosted um, this watch with. I mean, it's it's a lot. Like when we were going through the the uh, briefing of all the information, they spent so much time on the many ways in which you know you can be guided through your workouts, or it can analyze your workouts and do all these things. And it just really seemed to me like Google really put its foot on the gas pedal to say this is a fitness wearable competitor yep. we've got fitbit check out what we can do when we can flex that muscle yep mm -hmm. no pun intended <laughs> no and, and i agree with you and as a runner like i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give the pixel watch 3 a look you ever yeah. we've talked a lot on the show i, I want to be able to take leave my phone at home run with the watch listen to podcasts do all the running stuff and you know unfortunately my adidas running app fell short on the experience with the watch in terms of making it that I could trust it. Um, if they can move the running stuff to Fitbit, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll you know, like mm -hmm. I'll, you I know. do also want to give it a shot because they have a lot of new software features that just won't be available for at all, or maybe for a couple of months on my OnePlus watch too, including they have a new Google TV remote widget. Um, mm. the, the watches also have ultra wide band. So you can um, improve, have improved watch unlock support and also use it as a digital car key with I think they're starting with BMW and mini cars. It's very cool. There's a new Pixel voice recorder app, so you can like record little voice notes on the go. Yeah, um, love you can that. also get a live feed of your Nest cameras. And if yeah. you have a Pixel phone, you can also, you know, shoot astrophotography photos using your watch. You can now control yeah. that. Yeah. So a whole bunch of new integrations and software features that and are debuting the, on this watch. The Nest camera on your on your wrist. That's pretty That's sweet. That's very cool. Yeah. Say. yeah. And then then the last and the littlest but not least is the uh the Pixel Buds uh Pro, Pixel Pro Buds Pro 2. Two. Um you know so the the earbuds that are rolling out, they've got uh a nice uh, collection of colors uh, that you can choose from. Uh, they put the Tensor uh, A1 chip inside the buds themselves. So it is the, the first time a Tensor chip has been inside the buds to help you unlock all the Gemini functionality and things like that. The, the noise cancellation, all that fun stuff, it's all powered by Gemini, um, which is why. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if the, the Gemini is not running on... This. Well, they're saying first they earbuds built for the Gemini it, era. Like it, wor it works it, with Gemini Live and all this. It sort works of stuff. with Gemini yeah, Live. Yeah, so, yeah. like, if you're if you start Gemini Live on your phone, you yeah. can basically hear and continue the conversation with the mics on your on your earbuds. But you're obviously right. not running the large language model of Gemini with right, no, of course, on yeah, your earbuds. So, so, um, so these cost two hundred twenty nine dollars. They come in porcelain, hazel, wintergreen, and peony. Uh, that pink one. Pink um, yeah. And um, uh, and they say they're twenty seven percent smaller and twenty four percent lighter, um, and they basically use forty five million data points uh, of ear scan data to like model people's ears to make sure that these have the the securest fit they possibly can. And there's a way to tighten them even more when you're using it uh, for fitness stuff to make sure they don't fall out. Uh, you, you can lock it with this yeah. little nub right there because yeah. I've used Pixel Buds to death at this point and usually it's just this like outer or you know this this two-thirds of it and this is more like a little locking mechanism that when you twist it in yep. more secure which is great yeah it's yep. interesting google's still going with this design you know we could just saw samsung switch over to the stem design i'm kind of curious to see how that will affect you know the comfort and the yep. noise cancellation you know will they still be really good google does say that in terms of noise cancellation these cancel twice as much noise with the new quote silent seal 2.0 and that also the tensor a1 chip is kind of beneficial because it has a dedicated highway lane so they call it for your audio without compromising the continuous auto process audio processing required for noise yep. cancellation to go on yep so like we said there's a lot um it's exciting uh i do want to call out before we wrap uh this segment at least uh they really leaned into the pank um, and in fact, one of the lifestyle photos they sent us was a picture of the Pixel 9 peony color on a bed of cotton candy. Um, Floating on a tank is, cloud. It's yeah, <laughs> really, um, and it, it, you know, those of you listening, uh, please go to AndroidPayful.com. We will post that image up there so you can see what it looks like. But um, it's pank indeed. Um, but so that's all so the very information. Very quickly, just, just ask you three, which of these devices are you most excited to get a hands-on uh, at the event? Good oh, question. the fold. The fold. The fold's my my excitement. The fold. The fold and the, the and the fold and the, the watch. Pro. Actually. Oh yeah. I I because I'm trying to think what would my daily driver be. I would love it to be the fold. That's yeah. I'll say the fold. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, for me, it's an obvious. I've just been switching between yeah. folds so often. I just want to try the new phone and see how it compares to the 
the Z Fold 6. Yeah. Yeah. I think the two devices that I'm most excited about right now are the Fold and the larger uh, format watch. I'm really, really curious yeah, about that. That's right up, yeah, right up your alley with your big yeah. arms. Little big um, wrists. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to take a break right now. And when we come back on the show, uh, you're going to hear our post-event uh, impressions. What Once we've got our hands on these devices, what we thought of them, if the God, Fold really continues them. to be the one we're most excited about or if another device broke out for it. Um, uh, and yeah, we'll be recording directly from Mountain View. So uh, you're getting kind of a twofer here. Um, and we're really excited. Uh, and when will be joining us for, oh no, I don't know if Wynn will be joining us for that, but she'll be in some of the stuff. Um, we'll, hope, that we, we'll hope. Uh, oh, we'll cross fingers. I know she's got a busy day. Um, yeah. But yeah, but uh, we will be back uh, after this break. And we're here by the magic of airplanes and Google <laughs> and everything all together in Mountain View, California, mm -hmm. of what we just realized for the first time in the same room, all four of us doing Android Faithful. Yeah, yeah doing it together. Doing like, it together. It's not like we together, haven't done not. this before, sure, but yeah, all yeah, four yeah. of like us behind. talking at a yeah. table, yeah. crossing our fingers that the technology is capturing everything the way we expect yeah. it to. We do, we do the best we can, Jason. <laughs> I, I, I trust in you. So, yeah. so yeah. We're, no, we're no longer at the Bayview campus where they yeah. actually have No, this the is event. not Google. Oh, yeah, no, no, we're at an offsite location. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, looking around, there's some Google-y touches yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we were able to, the, the event just wrapped a little bit. We, we went to, an, uh, to a nearby location so we can get very quickly record and wanted to uh, share our, our thoughts and impressions yeah. from the Made by Google event. So all the news is out. Like we said earlier in this episode, it's all on Android Faithful. Bravo to Michelle for putting in triple time, <laughs> getting in all yeah, those specs and comparisons mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so go to AndroidFaithful.com. You can see it all there. Um, but at this point, at this point, um, what did you guys think of the event, the keynote itself, uh, the, the presentation, being in the audience for that? I was shocked that they had the bravery to do a live demo of Gemini. Uh, you, all, the you demos, saw, all the demos were if live. You watched, if yeah. you watched the, the, the event and you saw the initial demos, live demos of Gemini, you yeah. see, you realize why a lot of companies don't do live demos. Yeah, but at the same time, like, bold. that's Everyone the knew. right way to and, go. Yeah. Yeah. It no, is always the right way to go. Even, even though demos are not 100%, you're always going to be criticized if you do a demo of something that's pre-recorded, right? Mm -hmm. And especially yeah. if you're sly about it's it. It's like, oh yeah, oh they don't trust it or whatever. Right. Like, like think about at I/O when people were just like it were breaking down every demo to be like that was re that wasn't real or whatever. Totally. And the fact that there was one demo fail, they laughed it off. They had a backup device and it worked when he yeah. switched devices. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Like, I was yeah. mad though. Yeah. I was feeling for that guy. I was oh, crossing yeah. my yeah. fingers every time it didn't work the first two times. It's like, yeah. oh man, like it hurts. Yeah. It hurts it to watch that. Like I don't, I don't revel. Or or enjoy that yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Um, so I was happy that he finally kind of pulled it yeah. through. Yeah. I and mean, then we were talking before mm -hmm. the recording though about the celeb the celebrities, right? You had oh. a question about that. Yeah, I, I mean so I think when Galaxy Impact came out, we always kind of cringe because you know Samsung loves their celebrities, whether it's the you know the Korean pop stars and or Sydney Sweeney this year. And then this year I was very surprised that Google decided to take a page out of the Samsung book and have a couple of celebrities. Three, three, three celebrities. celebrities. Yeah. Sorry, three. And I would like to, for the record, I went 0 for 3. When, when Kiki Palmer came out, I leaned over to win. I'm like, who's that? I'm like, Brian, it's Kiki Palmer. And he's just like, who's that? I'm like, oh. And then, and then a basketball player came out who I did not know who it was, but he was very tall, so I believed he was a basketball player. Yes. <laughs> and then the, very last, nice. then the last one I heard Jason gasp because it was a YouTuber that you know. Right? Oh, Rover. Rover. Rover, yeah. yeah. Rover, yeah. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big he's science a guy. Yeah. Your kids, your kids might your eventually. Kids will, yeah. eventually. Yeah. A little too early for that. If it was Bluey, it'd be another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. 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 but, but it, it, I felt like it was moderately cringe. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as the Sydney Sweeney one. No, no, no. Yeah. And I, I think like, yeah. The, 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 the Mark Rober didn't even speak, I think. They no. just pointed to him he in the crowd. He was just kind of there. Which was weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, I enjoy yeah. coming to tech yeah. keynotes <laughs> of yeah. unveilings he's done, of Mark He's hardware. done, like, paid collaborations with Gemini before. I think they did ah, one okay. where they, like, drew, like, they, like, flew a giant paper plane through something. He oh, had, like, a video on it. Yeah. Yeah. And probably in his in his writer, it's yeah. kind of like, yeah. we aren't going to ask you to speak because you've already done a bunch of stuff, so can you just be in the audience <laughs> yeah. and we'll pay we'll you an additional you. whatever. Well, so at least uh, the basketball player one, who I forget his name, I don't know who the basketball player was. Yeah. Um, no, 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 but they right. used him to demo the add me function. Mm -hmm. uh, add me, photo function, yeah. yeah. Which, cool. Very cool. We got, yeah. to, we got to play with it a little. We, we got to play it, around with it. Absolutely. It. Um, I did. I thought AdMe was going, and I know we saw the leaks, but you never know to see what's going to be. But like my initial vision for AdMe was that it would be a 
post image processing thing, kind of like Magic Eraser, mm -hmm. where I took a picture of everyone, then I got in the picture, took a picture, and then it would stitch it in. Mm -hmm. But it is a live, everyone in the moment, AR filter kind of thing where, okay, take a picture, now camera person switch, you know, I mean, someone else take it, and you get in the picture, and then it uses Gemini to stitch and make the best picture. Yeah, it's, um, it really is doing what you're, you're talking about. It's kind yeah. of a mixture of both. Right. It totally has that AR quality. It takes that first image, overlays it over the second. Yeah. Something that we've actually seen in like panorama mode for yeah. mm -hmm. many, many years where you get that kind of overlay so you can line it up perfectly. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a little something new and a little and, something we're And it's to. got best take baked in under yeah. the hood where it's using the best take of the people to stitch to get the best picture you can get. Yeah, if you have cool. multiples yeah. taken in yeah. a short amount of time together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And you can add wildflowers if you really want. <laughs> the AI, we were laughing at the AI generator because they showed the demo of how using AI, generative yeah, AI, AI and Gemini, yeah. and like they took a picture and they added wildflowers. They took a picture of someone the in the grass sky, to wildflower yeah. the sky, and I lead over with I'm like, but it's not real. It's, no. Like it didn't, it's, yeah. Editor, yeah. it's a playground feature. But that's, yeah. that was the moment I said, if I was shooting an album cover for my band and I wanted it to look better than just like a photo, mm -hmm. that's a cool way to make a piece of art sure. versus capturing a moment with your friends and family. Right. That's yeah. the, you know, it, as a creation tool. Yeah. The overall theme that I got, like, from a lot of the features they introduced is that, you know, they're really cleverly using a lot of things that already exist. And you're like, you're thinking, like, why didn't anyone else think of that before? Mm -hmm. So, for example, like the Add Me feature, right? Yeah. That uses AR Core, which is Google's augmented reality platform. And it's basically using a whole bunch of other things that already exist, like segmentation to, like, yep. detect where people are on the plane, like, pull them out and show you them as you're taking another photo. It's like combining things that already exist. They're not like creating something, an entirely new model that's never existed before. They're just using existing things. Mm -hmm. And another really good example of that is a feature that we actually wasn't, weren't briefed on. It's that no pulse detection that they yeah. announced at yep. the event 100%. At the, um, for the Pixel Watch 3. And you think like so many watches can detect your heart rate already. Yeah. You're like, why are they the only ones who have thought of this? Yeah. yeah. They implemented this. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's it's really a brilliant feature. I, I hope it does save lives. I hope people don't have to use it, obviously. But like, yeah. So the for, fact that it's there for yeah. those of you who don't who don't know, this is a feature that Google showed off during the keynote, where if it detects that you don't have a pulse as you're yeah. wearing your watch, I think it can alert like emergency services. Yeah. So in combination with other sensors. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's yeah. Not it, just it, it'll alert the phone and it will say no pulse detected. Are you okay? And give you 20 seconds to tap the phone and respond. Yeah. If not, then call uh, yeah. call uh, paramedics because and they had doctors on the screen and the keynote explaining that like in the event of a no pulse, you're dependent on a passerby mm -hmm. or someone you're with to realize yeah. that you you yeah. you know, timely. Yeah. And they've got to call 911 and that you know that's a great that's a that could be a yeah. life saving feature, right? And it's, so it's like yeah. blending in like the heart rate monitoring and the fitness aspect and health aspect with the safety features that we already had with the Pixel Watch with like the yeah. like the check-in feature and things like that. Yeah, so. you know what, what's occurring to me right now is it's kind of an evolution of something like earthquake detection yes. on the devices yes. where yes. it's taking the data that the many sources, the disparate sources of data collection that's happening on the device and it's combining them in new ways yep. to come up with different inference. Speak with somebody in the Android Faithful audience and I apologize, I don't remember your name, but someone messaged us saying that the earthquake that happened in LA a couple of days ago, they got earthquake <gasps> detection five seconds before it, it happened, which is Gotta great. Love it. I mean, Amazing. gives you five seconds to get to safety, which you know, yeah, but, uh, yeah fascinating. Um, cool. So that so uh, when you mentioned the fitness stuff on the watch, you, yeah. you you talked to some folks about that in detail, right? Yeah, it, it kind of actually is kind of astounding to me. Um, so I think what was low key, and obviously the pulse detection was kind of like the big wow moment, the kind of kind of centerpiece, which I don't think any other OEM manufacturer software company has anything like that. So that was kind of their centerpiece. But I actually talked to Kathy Speed, who is a doctor of sports science. And I actually did, was not aware that the Pixel 3 has a lot of the super, you know, in-depth, you know, fitness tracking that I wear, you know, I talk about my whoop all the time. <gasps> oh my gosh, someone took my whoop. I have to get it back. Um, that I wear it for all the time, like um, heart rate variance, recovery, all that kind of stuff. The Pixel Watch has that. Yeah. And it's a little bit more low key, but it's the kind of, it's the kind of like in-depth, like high accuracy fitness tracking that, you know, again, I use, I think a lot of fitness enthusiasts use enthusiast brands for like Garmin or Whoop but it, it was it's in the it's in the Pixel Watch and yeah. I'm actually really intrigued and they've put a lot of thought into it like it was really fascinating thank you Dr. Kathy Speed for talking to me like they're they're it's a very well thought feature so. yeah Ron you were mentioning earlier like 
so many companies are chasing the blood glucose monitor yeah. that you kind of overlook a lot of the smaller things that yep. have been added already. Yeah. yeah, 100%. And and even more so, like the, the the push for fitness in the context of the watch was, I think, bigger than ever. And, you know, I've, I've you know, when you and I are very different, I don't yeah. track my fitness as closely as you do and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I do like to run, and there's so much running like focus on the the whole that was the whole demo was a running mm. kind of situation so like i'll give it a shot you know like if i you know if i can get my hands on a pixel watch three i'll put it through its paces you know, put it well the, you know, like, I, I think it's a really good example of google flexing its um not just relationship because it now owns fitbit and has for a couple of years but how those two departments are integrating really well together yeah. combined with the overall co company-wide um effort to unify all of their artificial intelligence prowess yes. at things. And this is just a really great direction for that, that AI attention to be directed at because it's like large amounts of data, organize it for me and put it into a context that I can then use as useful for me in my exercise or in planning my runs or analyzing it after the fact. Some yeah. of the demos I got where they were taking that data and showing what they can do with that from an analysis standpoint mm -hmm. now, because yeah. they already have the data. It's yeah. just a matter of putting it into context and AI is great for that. Yeah. I will say one AI thing, which I think is killer, which is a little, again, low key, was the Peloton integration. So you will be able to get Peloton content in Fitbit Premium. So that's like a big deal. It, it, anyone who loves Peloton, the, I think the killer feature other than the bike and the treadmill is actually the class content. So the fact that you can get Peloton classes with your Fitbit premium subscription actually kind of makes Fitbit a lot more compelling. A I lot of value. A the, lot of value. It's incredible. And the fact that you're getting it with the purchase of the watch. Yeah. Because like, that's the whole thing we talked about. It's like, great, they fit, but now you got to pay this monthly subscription. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're doing the same thing with Gemini Advance. Like, if you buy one of the Pixel phones, you get a year of Gemini Advance. Like, they're, you know, they're they're letting the products show the value in use to, and then when it gets to the point where you're like, okay, now i got to pay for it. You can't live without it, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of there. Um, all right, well, let's talk about the phones themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, um, we got the feel them. What do you think? Yeah. They, what was the phone? The feel? shininess oh, of oh them. Gosh, oh my god, they're so, so round. shiny yeah. and rounded. So round. They feel so. They're so comfortable. Yeah. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like they it's really are. They're comfy yeah. phones. Like an aluminum pillow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did. This. Is it aluminum or is it stainless steel? It's a, uh, so the Pro is aluminum on the outside. I, okay. They actually are very proud that the aluminum body is 100% recycled aluminum. Okay. Oh, they had a whole right. exhibit. Yeah. So. Um, I did think I thought it was interesting that the the denote the notation that they made during the keynote about the Pixel 9 Pro and the Pixel 9 Pro XL was that how there are people who wanted a Pro features but yes. at a larger or smaller size like that that, mm -hmm. that gave me the context and the explanation of why I have two versions of the Pro because we were yeah. talking about the lineup and you know you don't have to compromise anymore exactly right. like exactly. if you want a smaller like phone. most other phone phone lines, you have to compromise if you're getting if you want the Pro features, you have to get the big the big one XL 100%. model right? right. This time you don't have to compromise right. That that was a brilliant move, honestly. How many how many years have we been complaining about, or everyone's been complaining about, like you know, huge flagship phones? And then we lamented like the Zen phones, like a great phone, but it's you know whatever its fate is. But man, that was a, I I really like that move a lot. I I ordered a nine Pro for moderate moderate hands immediately. Hearing yep. that seriously, yep. it was it was awesome. So uh, fold. <gasps> I love the fold. I love it. Oh, it's, it's, it's the fold the winner? The is, the, is the fold the winner of the lineup? I mean, it's the most expensive, and they yeah. called it the pinnacle of mobile technology, right? Like, like, yeah. You know. it, it is the pinnacle well, of some, pricing. Uh, yeah. 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 Some bold words to say. Yeah. I, but they said that the... The video on the Pro is rated by extra. I don't know the third yeah, party, right. but it's rated as the best video on a smartphone now. Curious and the Fold yeah. is the pinnacle of smartphone tech, whatever. But I mean, do you want to, when do you want to upgrade from your, oh, your trusty Fold to this? I'm so, going to. Yeah. So, so the thing is, is like I, I think what it really made me sad was that I, you know, I, I really love the current or the OG Fold's uh, aspect ratio a lot, but. The front of that fold is just like any is just like any of the other Pixel 9s. It's a comfortable size, yep. and the screen is brighter. It's thinner. It's lighter. It's beautiful. Like I opened it up, and I kind of this big smile crept over my face, and I didn't want it to. I wanted to be like, oh well, I really miss my old aspect ratio. I was like, no, it's a it's a beautiful phone. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for it. Well, speaking of aspect ratio, yeah, uh, one of the things that's immediately noticeable when you like compare the OG Pixel Fold to the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is that they've kind of went complete 180 in terms of the aspect ratio. The OG Pixel Fold would open up into basically a tablet mm -hmm. where, you know, you have the width 
is longer than the length. And what that would mean is that most applications would open in their tablet UI if they had one. So, like, which so for is example, problem. Like, so for example, Gmail in the tablet UI, you get the list of the your pain, messages yeah. in your inbox, yeah. and then you get the message to the right of it, which mm -hmm. is a very productive way to use it. Right. In my however, terms. with the switch to now a phone UI, which is basically you have the the height is longer than the width. Now you have apps opening in their phone UI. So for example, Gmail, now you just have your inbox showing. And you got to tap on an email and you see the email in your full it's screen. full width, You yeah. don't have that dual pane layout anymore. Which, you have to actually twist the phone over to see it. That was what I say. So if you take a fold, unfolded, you see just your list of messages on Gmail and you tap and you see a message. On that list of messages, if you just rotate the phone 90 degrees, it pops into tablet mode. Yeah. Which doesn't seem, it's not a perfect square. But it's close. But it's close. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's close yeah. enough yeah. that you yeah. would expect the same layout. Yeah. Almost. And this sounds like a small nitpick, but it's kind of, it kind of highlights the, the, the really bold decision that Google made with the first gen Pixel Fold. They were kind of banking on the fact that we're going to release this product. We're going to really push developers to make their apps tablet and large screen optimized. That didn't happen. Yeah. There are way too many apps that still are letterboxed. <laughs> on the, the I feel like I have to apologize for the community. I'm I mean, sorry. it's not developers' fault. There's many good reasons why yeah. you don't want to invest the effort into it. There's not that many devices. Yeah. Now, Google saw the writing on the wall and did what almost every other foldable maker did and made a portrait foldable. So yeah. now it's much more like the OnePlus Open, the Z Fold 6. It opens up into a larger phone uh, UI instead of a tablet UI. Yeah. Um, so moving on from the fold of the other folds, what about those colorways? Yeah. Like color, colorways. Color they, they're very striking. Yeah. Like what? What did I say when we were in there looking at them? Oh. They tickle your eyes. They tickle your <laughs> eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of them in particular. I mean, some yeah. of them are kind of along the lines of what we've come to expect. But right. you know, that the the the, uh, the infamous pank, of pank, course. Pank, although it's, it's not pank. It's, it's peony. peony. Yeah, peony. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It jumps off the table. Like, oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Like yeah, it really, really does. It's, and, you know what it reminded me of? There's certain colors of highlighters that have that like <laughs> vibrant, like neon yes. quality. Yeah, to yeah. it, yeah. and it's like that, but yeah. on your entire phone. It's yeah. really, really so, striking. Which device do you think has the best colors? The nine. Oh. The nine. The nine. That, yeah. has, that has that the has the AKA, yeah, uh, yeah. The and it has the, the yeah. really bright, 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 bright green, green, right? Bright green, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Why, yeah. why not those on the upper? On the XL. Yeah. yeah. I can understand the fold is harder to make, you know. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But the Pro and the the Pro XL, they, it has like a more subdued pink, like yeah. rose quartz. Yeah. And also has like a light gray hazel color. Yeah. But they're not, those are just like pretty standard phone yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so what, Ron, when you asked me about what celebrities we ran across, my first, my, my first thought was Brian Cutter because we, I, I happened to be uh, kind of over at a display, kind of like a, a, a kind of exhibit of like the colors, and this gentleman walked up to me, and he happened to be the person, Brian Cutter, who designed the Pank, the Peony, <laughs> yep. and I spent like ten minutes like talking to him, and I think that's so interesting because he did talk about like the intentions of every color they pick is so intentional and he just has this whole philosophy behind it and so I think actually he mentioned that there is the rose quartz which is kind of like a lighter kind of pink a little more sophisticated pink let's call it it's probably not his wording but mine and then the pink and so it might be that the idea is that the pro is higher end, it's more premium, and maybe because of that higher price point, they are going for a little more, I don't know, sub subdued, elegant, kind of that vibe. Maybe yeah. that's it. But yes, I thought Brian Cutter was a celebrity, so I... <laughs> well, so much so that we actually, we, 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 he took some time to chat with you at that yeah. display. And so uh, we're going to include that interview, I think, in next week's episode. But patrons, you can get a preview of that. We're going to release it later this yeah. week uh, on the patron feed. As yes. Right. peak of our exclusive interview with the designer of the pank which I feel like <laughs> makes this entire trip worth it the fact that we found the guy who made the color and I talked to him a little bit after you left yeah. after the interview and just understanding the process and like how these aren't color like he he created this color yeah. out of nothing and then he was telling we were, I was like what's the, what's the hex code he's like no I have he's like there is no hex code I have to like you know come up with RGB values and like and, and the way they have to take into account print the, the you know because you see a device you see the box for a device on a shelf at a store and then you open up the device if it doesn't look the same then you're like what the hell you know and um so just it's fascinating world of color which it, is, it yeah, was, yeah. It was great. it doesn't have a hex code i'm gonna take yeah. a 
take an image of it, open a circle to search, highlight it, then ask what Gemini, is what is the hex code of this? <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. 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 But, uh, Speaking we'll of Gemini, exact. Yeah. we'll be yeah. exact. Yeah. Did y'all get to do any of the demos, for the Gemini demos, like Gemini Live, the new contextuals of Gemini? No. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did the, the research demo. Um, which is the, the, so that gets to the, the stuff that's coming, the the, the Project Astra stuff down the line. But there's a yeah. feature uh, in Gemini that's going to come down the re, down, down the line in a couple of months um, where you could say, uh, "I'm I'm thinking of doing this. Can you research it for me?" And Gemini comes back with a ten page report on what you you know. So the example I saw was, "I'm thinking of opening a coffee shop in Seattle. What do I need to do in order? To, what permits do I need? What do I need to do?" And it came back with a ten page Google Doc of like how to start a business, basically, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, there, we are seeing a little bit of this in, in competitors in, yeah. as well. The the one that I always mention is Perplexity, but they do something similar to this called Perplexity Pages. Yeah, and you can take a search or you you know a, a query into the AI, and it goes out to all its, the places it deems important yeah. and pulls it back, and then it will construct that into kind of a, an easy to look at yeah, kind of delivery method thing, yeah. yeah, that you can then publish to the web and other people can see it. Um, so it seems like they're all kind of following well, a similar that, track. That's actually a great question, Mr. AI inside. How, <laughs> how much of what you saw today from Google is playing catch up with the rest of the AI, AI industry or Google blazing its own trail? That's a really hard question to answer because there's so many different directions happening yeah. right now. And I think that all of it feeds into the same goal, which is, you know, what are the many ways that we can use this new capability or what seems like a new capability in all of our different efforts? Yeah. I don't know that I saw any one particular thing that I was like, nobody, you know, like, oh my God, I never yeah. even thought of that before because I haven't seen it before. Well, but they all have different, you know, different benefits to or, or strengths to how they how they do that. Yeah. And, well, you know, I would say, does it matter if they're not at the absolute cutting edge? No. If they're the ones who actually bring it to the masses? Totally. Because like, and yeah, I think yeah. that's a big goal. I think you still have to be like a premium subscriber and it's still only in like, like a beta access. Whereas uh, Gemini Live is available starting today for any Gemini Advanced subscriber. And yeah. if you buy a Pixel Pro, you get a whole year free. You get a year. So, yeah. like, and I tell available. you what, that's going to that's gonna lock people in, into right. it Big because time, yeah. that's going to give them more reason to try it and and just think about the the advancements that we've seen in the amount of time that we have what about six or eight or ten months down the line you okay. know think about like pixel updates and, and yep. pixel feature drops, pixel drops those yeah. are going to get more interesting it's a really smart approach well that's why i was talking to somebody at the event uh, and they were asking me, what do i think of all this and i was like well we said it a year ago when chat gpt was making headlines and mm -hmm. ai was coming and and we said Google's advantage is the fact that there are all these applications that we've been using for the past 20 years that now we can't live without, like Gmail, like Docs, like whatever it might keep, whatever it might be. And now the AI is just going to, Gemini is going to enhance the usage of those. And yeah. interconnect them. Interconnect That's them. a yeah. huge yeah. benefit exactly. that Google the, has. The, the demo they showed of Gemini being able to uh, pull out uh, details from a YouTube video. Yeah. So like if you're watching a cooking demonstration, like give me the list of ingredients I need to make this recipe and it, and it pulls it out from the video as opposed to trying to scrub through. I, I, although add that to my shopping list. It is full circle. Yeah. Life story yeah. in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. It is yeah. full yeah. circle though because, <laughs> because we used to just get recipes online. Yeah. And then, then everyone started writing these long blog posts and recipes. Then oh, they started gosh. making video recipes and now I need AI to give me the recipe <laughs> from the video, right? So it was, yeah. But, um, yeah, but at least but, you don't have to scroll 20 screenfuls right. to oh, get to yeah. the recipe. Yeah. But the um, screenshots function we yeah. took a look at that. You, you, you know, sum that up pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. I'm, I'm actually, I, I think it's, that's one of, um, oddly, that's one of the things that I'm really excited about. I did not expect to be excited about it. Think about how expendable, how disposable screenshots have been in the past. Yet also, I, you know, I consider how often I use screenshots for a particular purpose in a particular moment. And then I might need to refer to that later. So the Screenshots app is really a way of organizing all those screenshots you take on your device and then making it searchable, indexing it. Um, the way that I kind of came to understand it t through today's demo and actually talking to the Screenshots guy, I got a demo of it and I told him and he was like, oh my God, that's a great way to explain it. It's like a personalized on-device Pinterest. It's these are the specific things that I am interested in right now now on the go, instead of having to have 200 Chrome tabs open of all these things that I got to remember then to find it and go in there, the screenshot catalogs that and yeah. I can search for it or I can put it into its own collection. And I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally going to use that. Yeah. 100%.
Um, so the one, I feel like a little bit of scorekeeping, uh, we laid out the bets as to whether or not uh, these devices and at this event would also be launched with Android 15. And yeah. Android 15 was absent from the entire day. <laughs> yep. Yep. All the devices have Android 14. There was no mention of Android 15 oh, yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, I, did, you come across, did you hear any? I mean, no. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, so I guess I, I, I was, I was the one. They're definitely going to ship these devices with Android 15. So, yeah, I like, was this wrong. is not an Android event. You I know. Guys. Yeah, I know. This is a hardware. Yeah. Samir was there. Samir. Skeptical, but yeah. no, I, yeah, I knew it was true the moment it was leaked. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so no Android 15 yet. We'll just have to wait a little longer. That's um, okay. And then the, the speaking of things that don't run Android 15, yeah. we didn't talk about the buds. Oh my God! Yes, you're right. The oh, buds. Yeah. I forgot about them. Yeah, yeah. 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 They I, a got, I actually thing. got a little demo of the buds in like a. Of course, since you put them in your ears, the environment. Yeah, I did put them in my ears. <laughs> they had actually. Yeah, be, they the, had. Boxes. It was sanitary. Oh, wow. They had oh, boxes yeah. of ear tips. They cleansed yeah. it out. We used completely new ear tips every single time. Yeah. So I was in like this sound. This like this booth. Where they had like a um, like a train station simulated, an airplane uh, simulated, and things like that, like yeah. a noisy coffee shop simulated, and yeah, they, we were testing out the noise cancellation, and yeah, it sounded really good. But obviously, this is something you got to test in the real world. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense, and like you can't replicate that yep. in a controlled environment at an event. So it did sound good to me. The fit was really nice. They were really lightweight, uh, but I do want to try them out out in public. And I did get to try the Gemini Live integration, actually, which is pretty neat. Like, yeah. Oh, cool. The way it worked for me is you press and hold on the earbud, and then that invokes Gemini on your phone. And then you say, let's talk. And then that brings up Gemini Live. And then you just start talking. And you can like ask it anything you want. Um, they, we had, they had some demo prompts about, like, oh, I'm doing a, a, a podcast recording, coincidentally, you know. Like, hey, help me with some ideas. And then it starts talking back. And then you can interrupt at any time to like follow up on something. Could you so actually like send all those ideas to my Google Keep, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna write them all down. Yeah, 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 totally, yeah. totally. I'm kind of curious though, like if people will actually be using that out in public, like talking to Gemini Live. That's in my public. big. That's my whole thing. That all of these demos are always these self-contained yeah. hypotheticals that don't necessarily, you know, like, you know, are you going to tap your earbud and talk to something that nobody, you're going to look like a crazy person on the street, you know, like, or at home or whatever it might be. And so, but it is really cool that you can have that conversation, but the practical usage. And the, I was talking to one of the people at Google who was doing the demos and I was saying how all of the Gemini demos are always like, use cases that show how the thing works, but aren't in a way that I would ever use it. Like, mm. Gemini, respond to this email and tell them how thankful I am for you know, coming to my event. Like, just write the email yourself. Like, you know, like <laughs> Gemini is completely, I use Gemini for, you know, for lots of things. Like, help me, you know, structure this document, then do the edit. And I know, they're, you know these demos are meant to be very, like, top level and very simple, but, you know, there's a gap between how they're saying it works and what the practical usage will be. And I think the Gemini Live thing will show that as well. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I would say that the uh, previous versions of the Pixel Buds had hands free or have hands free assistant. assistant. Yeah. That's a feature that I've definitely used a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, a lot it's of the nice features we saw are like definitely aspirational. Gemini Live is one example. It's like yeah. a stepping stone to Project Astro, which is like yep. fully image and like video based. You know, you can ask anything you see. It's kind of training wheels to a certain degree. Yeah. It's yeah. like, all right, start dipping the... your toes in. And then yeah. once the real capabilities come, already yeah. your imagination actually, is there. And you're like, oh, well, now I can actually do that thing that I yeah. realized. I was I talking do. to a product manager on the Pixel team about the video features. And a lot of the video features like Video Boost, Super Res Zoom up to 20x, like all that is done on the cloud. And the reason is just because you can't do that all on device right. yet. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no reason we can't do that in the future. But right now, that's so computationally intensive because you can apply all these ag algorithms on every individual frame. You know, you can do that on yeah. photos. You can do that on videos up to like 4K 30 to a certain degree. But once you get up to 4K 60, 8K 30, you gotta disable so many features, like yep. all these things you want happening, HDR plus, the night side algorithm, you just can't do in real time at such high resolution without like your phone exploding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That all yeah. the processing it has to do. So right now it's being done all in the cloud, but there's not nothing stopping it from happening in the future. You know, as things progress, the yeah. ISPs get 
faster and more you know efficient yeah. i'm surprised at how much is actually happening on the device though the gemini studio stuff is that the one where you take a photo yeah. and you say replace that my thing today was dragons replace that with dragons <laughs> and it did a really great job i expected that to be the kind of the feature that you pay for reimagine uh is it reimagine, re-imagine yes yeah. i we think that's in the cloud the, the, all the magic that might be happening in the, in the cloud, cloud but you don't have to pay extra for it which right. I thought was kind of surprising because so much of like image generation tools that we use now, you get a certain amount of credits mm-hmm. and yeah. then the rest of it you have to pay for. And this one you don't. Like yes. Well, um, they do, you know, Magic Eraser. Actually, you right? know what? That might actually happen on that the device, happen by in the, the future. way. Because yeah. Magic Eraser right now, it used to be like pixel exclusive or you have to be like a Google One member right now to have unlimited access. Mm-hmm. But like they're giving Magic Eraser, you have like 10 uses a month as right. like a way to get people's foot in the door right. and try it out. Right. They could expand Magic Editor and make it available to Google One subscribers in the future. Yeah. I think it would be a cool way, would be a really yeah. neat way to get people to subscribe to Google One. Yeah, just reversing real quick. When I was talking with a guy who was showing off the generative feature that I was just talking about, I'm pretty sure he said that's happening on device and not in the cloud. That's pretty well, impressive. when I when I asked him specifically, they said the segmentation, like detecting what is the foreground, what are people, what oh. is the background. That happens oh. on device. Okay. okay. But the actual image but the actual image generation is, okay. that is in the cloud. Hmm, interesting. interesting. Hybrid approach. That's not what they so. told me. Okay. I can't yeah. get over, Jason, that you reimagine dragons, if anyone's... Oh, <laughs> yeah, not intentionally. Yeah. Although I did what I wanted were dragons in the sky and hot <laughs> magma on oh, the ground. Oh, yeah. And uh, for whatever much. reason, it was just too much. I, br- too much. I broke the system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the keynote itself, though, Rick Oslo came out and ended it, and it, it ended with Project Astra, yeah. right? And I, I, and I was like, oh, we're going to get some big yeah. surprise. What's thing, coming but, in the but, future? You're hoping for uh, the yeah, XR? Maybe, XR yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for something. But what did you think of the whole Astra, you know, kind of capper to it? Hmm, yeah. I mean, kind, kind of expected. We knew that yeah. Astra is going to be coming at some point. They keep alluding to it, which means we're going to see it. Sometime in the future, we still have no idea. They also right. talked a little bit about kind of advanced research capabilities, which I guess we yeah. kind of already talked about a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, not entirely unexpected, right. but I, I guess I guess uh, comforting to know that they keep mentioning it, so it's not going to be one of those projects that gets forgotten yeah. over time. Yeah, you know? yeah. I kind of like what you said, Jason. Was like, it's like kind of priming all of these other features are, are in a sense like training people and getting used to pe- getting use getting users used to a world where this is what you can, can do, do and, and thinking about these things. Yeah. And even just mentioning it is like, hey, this is coming. So start practicing now. Think about what you could be using, and then that kind of leads to, lends to the success and adoption of the of the big thing coming. I really like that idea though. The yeah. training, the the priming. Um, we can also put a capper in the fact that Zoom Enhance now exists, right? I, yes. I, oh God. I think it's rolling out starting today on the Pixel 8 Pro, yeah. which was originally announced for at made by Google 23, by the way. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So here we are a year later, it's finally Pro. happening, yeah. so there we go. The 9 Pro, the 9 Pro XL and the Fold. So yeah. all the, the pros from the, this generation and the last generation. Yep. Yeah. Cool. cool. Well, made by Google. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What did you guys think? Any of the last, uh, last impressions? I'm, I, I've never been to a made by I've Google. I've never been to so thumbs thumbs up. I, know, I, feel, I feel so bad. Jay, yeah. Like Jay, Jason was saying, how oh we never you know we never we we've never as like a unit yeah we've yeah. been we always cover like, from and, afar. And I, like, nice I, I went to the New York one like I always yeah, went to the New York ones but like it. so it's interesting to see those and I was right when we we're doing all about Android that for the past couple of years they have been in New York and the events have been slightly similar although I don't think as big as pomp as it was with this one yeah um, I really yeah, feel like they really made an effort to get like to get people talking about it and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, so yeah. yeah. Google, if you're listening, if you can send some Pixel 9 Pro folds our way, we'd be very appreciative. <laughs> I mean, when you have the platform, you might as well use yeah, it. Great. <laughs> we yearn for the fold. <laughs> yep. So. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Um, yeah. So we hope a uh, big week. A lot of a lot. It was all Google. It was all Android. We understand that. We'll be back next week to catch up on the news. Anything else that's been going on in the world, and we'll have that great interview about uh, Pank and Peony and that, that sort of thing. Pank. Pank. Patreon. Pank. Patreon.com slash Android Faithful. If you, if you want, want to hear that early scoop on yep. the on the Pank. Yeah. Profile. So. Cool. <laughs> uh, it's great to all be together and to do this. Uh, Fun times. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know all the stuff. Go to androidfaithful.com. Get all the specs and all the details of everything we got there. Follow us on social. Go to patreon.com slash androidfaithful to support us. Uh, and we'll get you next week uh, back to our regularly scheduled programming on Android Faithful. Bye, buddy.